I'm going to let you in on a secret here. When the good doctor and I uh, collaborate, and that's mainly me introing him and him talking about what he knows, psychology, there's the collaboration. But we do exchange notes before segments. And I'm looking at today's and saying, well, I have a, I have a, I don't like this, this, a fear of this, not really thrilled with this. And I'm wondering, do I have um, irrational phobias? And I don't think so, but I, I, I think there's a line between a rational fear and an irrational fear, and it can be along the same kind of uh, trek down the road when you cross over. Um, that's a problem. So what are phobias, and, and when do they become full-blown and irrational? Well, let's bring him in, the good doctor, Dr. John Braccio, Regional Psychological Services in East Lansing, Dr. John B as in boy, dot com, Braccio too, for the podcast. Good morning, sir. Happy well, post-Labor welcome. Day to you. Well, same to you, Dave, and I think yesterday was a wonderful day for people celebrating workers, of course, and also just um, having a beautiful sunny day to enjoy wherever you were. We certainly did. We were in Grand Haven over in Spring Lake or Lake Michigan, always a beautiful place to be this time of year. It is gorgeous. We were on uh, we were on Crystal Lake out of Beulah in Benson County. Very that nice. sounds like a wonderful thing to do. Um, it was. Let's, let's, talk, then let's talk a little bit about phobias. A phobia is an unreasonable fear taking into account circumstances. And, and back on your point, most persons have fears and anxiety to some level. And reasonable levels of anxiety and fear are actually useful. But when the fear and anxiety go beyond reasonable levels and hinder the ability of the person to function effectively, then we're looking at a phobia. And phobia is... Mm-hmm. When developed in a person, they seem to take on a life of their own. You know, I've worked with many people in them right now, people with phobias, and and they're really not unusual. And they seem odd and almost inconceivable to persons that don't have them. But if you have one of them, it really can shrink your life, and it can really have negative impact. We think of people that won't fly on planes, we people that people that won't go on elevators. We think of people that are fearful of driving on expressways, of people that have to drive if they're in a car with someone. Um, fear of open spaces I means fear of being in with large numbers of people. Like it, it can be almost anything you can think of: food phobias, contamination. It can be washing your hands. It can be locking doors. I just had a person come in and see me last week and said, again, what a statement I've heard in the past, Dr. Bracho, I made it on time. It was anxiety producing because I have things that I have to do in the morning and I just didn't do them today. And it makes me anxious, but I had to come and we were doing some testing. And, wow. and I hear that statement more than you might wow. you might think, Dave. So if you have a phobia, um, and, and, and a lot of people that have them, they're fearful of telling people because they sound so ridiculous. I mean, if you if you even hear if someone says, you know, I'm not comfortable walking through the door without hopping, okay, or I feel I have to touch my hair every 20 seconds or things that just, they just don't make any sense. Or I'm, I'm afraid to go into this social gathering with people that I know or don't know just because I become very anxious when I'm around people, whatever, whatever it might be, stage fright, you know, call it whatever you will. It, mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense. And often people keep them to themselves. They will also lead a life where they try to work around them. And that often doesn't work because you often have to confront these issues. It can impact your, your relationships. It can impact your work performance. It can impact your self-image. So phobias are not a small thing. And if you go to ERs, you'll see that people, it's, at, which is at severe levels, can fear they're having heart attacks and are having all these severe physical symptoms. So, Oh, because of the anxiety. Have, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, of the anxiety. So they're really a big deal and far more common than you might think. You had mentioned before about, uh, like, I, I've always, wasps have always been a thing that I don't like. If they're around, I know they're there. They don't mm-hmm. hinder what I'm doing, but a bumblebee somehow doesn't bother me. So I think we we all um, have things that may bother us, but it's when it crosses over to the point that we can't function or we have to develop our life around the phobia. And, and if, take my word for it, if you have one, 
you certainly know it and and the impact yeah. it can have on your ability well to then function. i think that i think that's um reassuring to a lot of people who you say if you have one you know it i mean you mentioned getting on the expressway if i'm hopping on and traffic's moving 85 and they're you know eight feet apart i'm not thrilled but i'm looking at it going oh great and then well giddy up here we go uh but that doesn't mean i like it, it but it, it's i'm not going to let it control me or paralyze me but but people who have those phobias that can happen yeah they could they could literally lock up and start the into the anxiety attack is what you're saying right well dave i worked with a person some years ago that never went on the expressway he worked for the state but he knew all the back roads he could go anywhere in the state but he never would get on the expressway and i know it sounds funny he and i would actually go out and meet and would take short little jaunts like you know from i'm sure on lake lansing getting on the expressway going down to saginaw i mean it sounds funny but just taking the first baby steps if you will but once you get these thoughts and feelings i worked with a person that in a relationship they didn't get married until the person could leave the town could leave the city person just functioned totally within ingham county we'll say wow. i remember the exact restrictions but it was, it could not leave town so when you when you when you when you think you're going to have these panic attacks or you think you're going to have the high anxiety it really slows you down and you really do need to find strategies and the ability to confront the phobia or the phobia will get worse and often can collect other phobias along and, the way and and it's not to say that people who have these can't still be high functioning or even brilliant. So I remember the woman, I think her name, Laura Hillebrand, who wrote uh, uh, the story Seabiscuit, had a fear and still does of leaving the house. Yes. And so she, but it didn't mean she wasn't a tremendous writer. Um, it, it just, it's fun. Now, what are some of the ways that you, as a, as a uh, person who's, been around psychology and and helping people with it now for basically 50 years well how do you get around this and and help people you know if they can't completely get over their phobia at least learn to live with it and not let it control them well first of all i think the most basic would be exposure therapy or desensitization this is when the person that gradually is introduced to the phobia in a small doses and eventually right. is able to overcome it. And this would be like if you're going to, say, say a real simple one, ride an elevator, get in an elevator, okay? Mm -hmm. You might first of all want to go, if it's in a lobby or somewhere, you might just want to watch the elevator, get used to being around it, and then maybe get in and then just go up the floor okay work but take 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 your time doing this and it sounds simple people say, oh, come on, watching people you. taking it safely that can help right yes look that's they're right. all walking right. in and out they're fine so and trying that's to good... try to try to normalize it in your own mind yeah it's a, it's a little more complicated on a plane but you do the same kind of a thing i have walked over you know the old auto school you know walk over the the, the bypass over there oh mm -hmm. you have pat and guild you have these crossovers people that are afraid of heights going up on those, those steps and crossing over things like that things like that in fact i sometimes see people might see me doing some of these things that i've done over the years they what's good old dr bracho doing up there <laughs> you know this time crossing <laughs> over there um, if someone would recognize me but th those are those are the desensitization things that are helpful. Another major th process and strategy is cognitive behavioral therapy. This is when you confront the problem mentally, you you really confront the irrational how, how rational things are, and you just try to replace things with a positive thought versus a negative thought, and you just okay. get the the statements to move forward. Obviously, we have the medications. We tend to think of antidepressants. We tend to think of, oh, yeah. of right, right. tranquilizers. We think of beta blockers. These are all things that can be, you know, that can be, you know, can be can be helpful too. Another is, is deep breathing, very basic, you know, deep breathing where you just, um, you know, breathe in, breathe out. Just try to get the whole system relaxed. You can even count as you're doing it, breathing in and breathing out, oh, just relaxing. That can be another basic thing being done for thou by thousands of years, or for thousands of years by people. Another thing you could do, you can flood the phobia. This is where you really are just confronting it over and over again. You just say, I'm going to get on that elevator. I'm going up and down. I'm going to do it many times. 
So that's another strategy. And you also can find support groups either on the Internet or in terms of the community. The one problem I've seen with support groups, sometimes people just swap symptoms. So you really don't want to do that. Okay. And then, obviously, if you're thinking of medication, you'd seek out a family physician or a psychiatrist. But I think if you deal with this, the, these procedures, the desensitization, the deep breathing, the cognitive restructuring, potential support groups, talking to people too, friends that are supportive of you, it can be it can be very helpful. It's just people tend to be fearful of talking about their phobias because they seem so unreasonable. I can imagine, though, that a good portion of your practice has been trying to help people who come in because they realize they have an irrational fear of X, Y, or Z, or maybe all three. This is not a small, this is not an uncommon thing, is it? It's really not uncommon when you consider how debilitating, and it's just something that people aren't normally talking about. Like, this is not a common topic at the dinner table, the sporting event, whatever it might be. Sure, but I get that, yeah. But well, It sounds kind of ridiculous. Like, you know, seven times last night I wanted to make sure I locked the door. So let's say with the boy, he's losing his memory here. It's getting a little touched here, if you will. Or if you were to say, you know, I really have to drive the car, otherwise I don't feel I'm in control. Or I, always, I want to sit near the door. And you're saying, oh, okay, you're in a cabin up north somewhere. Oh, you want to you want to sit near the door. People just don't say that. They just do it. Or if you're on a plane, I have actually various times seen someone really insist on being on the aisle. Okay, that that that, that those are things, the things that I have seen. We see food food phobics. If you go into a restaurant, you see someone <laughs> picking at the food looking at it over, you very well could be looking at a food phobic. I remember reading, or someone telling me, actually, that there were 200 tons of beetles and the billions of McDonald's in a year. So, you know, thinking, oh, you know, so should I start looking for beetles? Or gas phobics are exactly aware with OSHA in terms of, you know, where where gas problems are in terms of air you're breathing. So you, you'll find the phobic often is an expert, but they become kind of an invalid to the facts rather than realizing that um, life has a certain number of risks and, you know, the fear of it yeah, being hit by a right. meteor is probably a pretty small, small risk. So phobias are mm-hmm. pretty overpowering and they have personality of their own. You'll find a person, I can be talking to someone about a phobia and they will actually, and this is in good spirit, by the way, will be arguing almost supporting the phobia. Well, you know, Dr. Prashi, but, you know, going into a crowd, I mean, those those really, that is that is something that can get the heart pumping and make you feel unreasonable. They've done a lot of research. They've been they, they, researching it. Yeah. They do. They've, yes, they do. They do. They, they, yeah. And we all, and we my, all know people. I'll throw myself in the aisle seat on the airplane thing here, but only for a different reason. I have long legs. And and I, and I can get one stretched out just a little bit more on the aisle seat, but there's nothing to it other other than that. Um, these these though can control people's lives. It can um, alter their personalities, debilitating phobias. They they are not uncommon, but there are good and agreed on ways. And the doctor just went through that you can help get rid of those if you have one in your life or someone that you know, a friend or someone you know and love regional psychological services in east lansing and don't forget the podcast here at drjohnb.com that's the place it will reside uh, very shortly it's always good to talk to i know i know the doc enjoyed friday night uh with the spartans oh my goodness. it was wonderful Go green, yeah go it white. was pretty pretty good i i'm still seeing him running down the field 75 yards it was not bad <laughs> uh so there's it's never too early to start winning we could say that too uh with michigan state take care stay safe doc until our next visit okay same to you my friend bye-bye thank you sir we're back in a moment 1320 wils 